welcome to the journey so we took a pause for about a week uh, from that of our last uh, discussion so we were on the five t's and we discussed about the uh, transformation the uh, transferring and being transported and also uh, transmutation uh, as the last episode so today i'm going to introduce you to the last t that is the transcending part of the uh, our journey so uh, transcending means that we go beyond a certain fear a certain uh, realm a certain state of living state certain uh, stage so transcending stands uh, to the breaking down of that word trans and skandare in greek it uh, means trans means to go beyond or climb and skandare is to say that to climb over so in, in other words transcending signifies climbing over a certain state a third certain stage of our christian spiritual journey so uh, is it real is there a state called a transcended state of course in the bible that we find many examples even paul uh, was taken up to uh, the heaven and uh, many has had uh, revelations from heaven even john in in patmos had certain revelations so they all transcended to a certain state a certain level of spiritual realm uh, spiritual uh, elevation so is it possible for us to remain in that state of transcended state uh, continually and what are the benefits out of it yes of course as we find in uh, many examples uh in uh, in the bible in, when lord jesus himself was continuously throughout his ministry was living in a transcended state now why do i say that because he is 100% human at the same time although being 100% human he was filled with the holy spirit because the minute the holy spirit comes into our lives we are automatically transcended to that of a higher realm in the spiritual sphere a spiritual uh, i would say a spiritual stage so uh, we can see uh, the, the the example in uh, luke uh, chapter 8 verse 23 when the experienced fisherman we discussed it uh, a couple of uh, uh, episodes ago when experienced fisherman uh, set sail uh, to go to the other side uh we find lord jesus while they set sail falling asleep and when uh, the torrents when the waves were gashing at them these sailors this experienced fisherman uh cried out to the lord saying lord we are perishing but look at lord jesus' uh, remark and his reply he just asked where's your faith he just got up totally undisturbed is not uh, uh perturbed at all and he just rebuked the wind and the waters and the people were so amazed that thing he who is this person and even the winds and the waters obey so what really struck me is the most important thing is that while that the fishermen set sail and at the same time the waters were gashing at their a uh, boat and they were almost perishing or sinking jesus kept his peace and because he was so much filled with peace and filled with faith because he is the author and finisher of our faith as well because he is the author so he is the origin of faith but still most importantly he was filled with faith so and peace at the same time so uh the most important element of this transcendent state is the ability to have the state of peace or the spirit of peace upon your life the holy spirit brings it in our lives and we we, we looked at isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 the seven spirits of the lord uh, we went through that in detail in our previous episodes we discussed about knowledge wisdom understanding counsel might and the spirit of the lord 
and the fear of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord brings in all these seven spirits along with the Spirit of the Lord to dwell in you. And that brings so much of shalom peace that you automatically transcend from that of a disturber, uh, disturbing environment to an environment full of calamities and an environment where the waters start gushing into your life, but that of a state where that you cannot be disturbed. So this is a transcended state of uh, Lord Jesus, which is, of course, is achievable uh, in us as well, because that's the, that's the very first question Lord Jesus asked. Where's your faith? So if we have enough faith, and if we have enough uh, confidence in our Lord's uh, Holy Spirit, and if we uh, totally depend on Him, and continuously renew our mind, as Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, that we will continuously be able to retain and maintain the state of transcendent state with full of peace and harmony with the Holy Spirit. So that brings so much of uh, uh, I mean, so many answers to, to most of the questions and the disturbances and the turbulence that we face in our lives. So this is one example as the Lord Jesus also uh, exercised this uh, uh, state of being transcended uh, or climbing over a certain uh, state where humanly, uh, we are above the human state. When we looked at uh, Lord Jesus as our perfect example, as the only example that should be in our lives, that he was in a perfect peace in terms of in, in, in front of a storm, a calamity, uh, we should not forget that he was also 100% man. And 100% like us, that you, like you and me, who uh, would face uh, the, uh, uh, the emotions, the feelings, the hurts, the pains, the joys, and everything that we you and I are going through right now so he was 100% man I mean we can see that when he heard the news uh, of uh, his one of I mean his best friend you call it Lazarus is one of his closest friends whom he loved so much in John 11 uh, uh, chapter 11 verse 35 that we mentioned it's the shortest uh, shortest sentence in the new new King James version Bible that Jesus wept that even Lord Jesus felt the emotions when he went to meet uh, uh, his, uh, the Lazarus' family and when he was told that Lazarus has been dead for three days and why didn't you come and all that and Lord Jesus just wept John 11.35 and that is to signify that even Lord Jesus felt the emotions as a human being but at the same time he was not susceptible to those emotions because he was beyond a certain a level uh, of uh, being susceptible he had been he had climbed over a certain realm in order to overcome the best of the emotions now what happens in our lives is that when we encounter certain problems and when uh, tribulations come on our way what we do is we become emotional we become emotional over our loved ones thinking about what's going to happen to us and thinking about all the negativity that we could entertain. Fear creeps into our lives and at the same time various uh, doubts and negativity and fears the devil would start tickling in into our lives. So that is the grip of fear. So we, we discussed about it in, in the early episodes of our journey, the Hittite spirit where that it brings uh, so much of fear and cripples you and grab, grabs you by force and uh, uh, makes you so powerless and helpless. So, but to take control of the Hittite spirit, the answer is the peace that our Lord Jesus had. Remember the peace that he had on the boat. Remember the peace and faith that he uttered to other people. And he said, where's your faith? And no sooner in John 11.35 when he wept, he looked up and spoke with the Father. He prayed and there is a, there's a secret to that, to get in that peace. So always to have that communication with our Father. Always to have that link with the Holy Spirit, connectivity with our Lord Jesus. That is to draw and to be connected to the source of faith, source of peace and source of faith. 
so that we can be continuously replenished and pumped in uh, with peace and faith all the time in our lives. So there you go, we discussed him and we, we looked at in Lazarus' uh, example how Lord Jesus was also vulnerable as a human being to emotions. But he overcame those emotions with great peace and of the confidence that he had of the Father and the confidence of the Holy Spirit that we can also achieve the same result and the same state of being uh, in a transcendent state from that of uh, the state that uh, uh, we, we normally operate in our day-to-day -day lives. So once again, I would like to quote a very famous and a very uh, I quoted this many times, Roman, uh, Romans 12, 2, uh, book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, Paul reminds us the importance of renewing our mind all the time and to continuously, on a daily basis, to die to our flesh and to renew our mind. So what do we renew our mind with? Our renewal, renewal of our mind should be on the hope of our Lord. A renewal of the mind in Greek talks about a certain metamorphosis, a metamorphosis. So in Greek, that's, that's the word of renewal of mind. So meta here is to go beyond a certain level, quite similar to the Latin trans and scandare, climb over a certain state. So meta means metaphysical a certain state which is beyond the physical state that we live in right now. So this is the, the, the same transcending element or this transcending state that we are talking about of a Christian journey. So in this state, there's so much of peace and there's uh, the state is maintained by faith, as we mentioned, and the, the fuel of transportation is faith. And in this state, peace is the most important thing. Because the Lord Jesus continuously says, peace be upon you. And whenever the Jews meet each other and greet each other, when they depart, they say, shalom and shalom, shalom. It's a peace that I leave with you, Lord Jesus says, peace initially. So it's the state of peace which brings you that, uh, to that clear, conscious, uh, operating realm of a transcendent state. So we looked at uh, how the state of uh, being transcended from that our normal state is can be achieved that is by maintaining our faith in the Lord that we looked at it through our transportation uh, part of our last episode and at the same time uh, the uh, the pinnacle or else the height of that achievement is achieving a certain state of peace so this the, the state and the height of maintaining our peace uh, we are we entitled to it? Yes, we are entitled to it. Because if we read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7, we have been made to sit together in Christ Jesus in heavenly realms. So, which means that we have been automatically, as we have accepted our Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, we have been water baptized, and we have confessed our sins, and, and we have been reformed and renewed within inside out and when we do that we have been made up made to made to sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus so this is a transcendent place so when we are above a certain realm when we are above a certain state we automatically achieve that state of peace that we can look at any problem that which is be below us and not to be disturbed by it now, how does the eagle, now the eagle is, when you see the eagle flying up, soaring up in the sky, he's so calm and he doesn't flutter his wings just like any other small birds would do. He's not disturbed. He knows what exactly needs to be done to swoop down in order to take, catch the prey and takes the prey up into the air and that is where the realm of peace is the realm in the spiritual realm, there is a realm called peace. And when you achieve that peace, that whatever happens on the ground and whatever the schemes of attacks the enemy tries to bring on your life, that you will not be disturbed by it because you will be analyzing, looking at it from the lens of peace and faith. 
Now, what does the eagle do? I mean, I took this example uh, in an earlier discussion as well. The eagle, when it wants to catch the serpent, swoops down on the ground, catches the serpent by its head, and takes it up into the air, into the realm where the serpent does not have any more powers. Because when the serpent loses the ground on which that it can uh, grip and take hold of and oppress us, and when it is up in the air, in the state of peace, a state where the eagle is most comfortable of, the serpent loses its grip and the serpent dies. So that physical example, the natural example, is equally true in our physical, in our spiritual life as well, my brothers and sisters. So as long as that we are grappling or uh, fighting face to face on the same ground level with the enemy, it's very difficult for us to keep up with the battle. Yes, sometimes we may win, sometimes we may lose. So that is why that many Christians face this battle saying, okay, once you climb over the mountain and once again you're on the valley and fight in the same old battle and history repeats. Because if you understand to the answer, as the answer to that question, if you understand that we can, there is a realm, there's an elevation, which is called a transcendent state, which is full of peace, and that is the level that eagles operate. And that's the peace that we have been made to sit together in Christ Jesus, because he is the Prince of Peace. And in that state, that whatever happens on the ground with the enemy, that we can overcome easily, because we are not fighting the enemy on the level of the enemy, on that ground. So that is the strength, because when we uh, fight the enemy, uh, on that realm, as Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content, because that state is full of contentment, satisfaction, peace against anything else happens in the world. So that is why Paul says, although he lived on this earth, and he was a very accomplished learned academia, and he's uh, a very affluent and an influential person, but he considered everything that which is on earth as dung, and at the same time that he faced many tribulations, his ship was wrecked, he was stoned, he was spat at, and he was uh, uh, sought to be killed, he was imprisoned, and he was done. He was done everything, any atrocity that he could face, that he has faced everything. He has faced all the atrocities in life. So what he says is, in whatever state that I am in, I have learned to be content. In other words, uh, what he really meant there is, I have learned to hold my peace in whatever state in I come from. So there you go. Two examples. One, the Prince of Peace, our Lord Jesus, holding his peace in almost every area in his life. Even in the Garden of uh, Gethsemane, when he was betrayed and he was handed over to the Romans and he was captured, he was betrayed by his own people, he held his peace. When one took out the sword and cut the ear of the Roman soldier, he kept his peace and he even rebuked uh, his disciples saying, okay, that you need to hold your peace. And while he was being ridiculed, his beard was pulled, he was spat at and uh, crown of thorns was put on his uh, head and he was lashed and he was crucified with all that he held peace utmost peace the only time he was disturbed is that when the spirit of the lord left him on the last hour so that time he was a little bit disturbed that that's why he said father father why have you abandoned he was disturbed in the sense he was sad so you can see that when Lord Jesus, the only time he was really sad is that when the Spirit of the Lord, as I mentioned in Isaiah 11 and 2, 11 verse 2, that the Spirit of the Lord, when it left him, that he felt that peace also go along with him. So that was the time that he breathed his last. So my brothers and sisters, so there is a state of uh, transcendent state called peace. And how to achieve that? as I reiterate, is to have a continuous relationship with our Lord and to analyze and to look at our problems from the lens of uh, Lord's eyes and the spiritual eyes of the exercise in the authority that we have been given 
by our Lord Jesus when he made us sit together in him in heavenly places and exercising our faith while being transported in this journey. So that is how we achieve this uh, great peace in our lives and to have this conviction in him beyond any doubt that our Lord Jesus, he said that he will never leave us nor forsake us and the Holy Spirit is in us, that he is the person who heals us. Lord Jesus is the one that who heals us because in Exodus 23, in Exodus 15, in both instances and in, in Jeremiah verse, uh, chapter 30, 17, the Lord Jesus says and the Lord the Father says, I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord that you blesses your bread and water that none of the plagues that I plague the Egyptians with will come on to you because that I will protect you and take away sicknesses from your midst. I am the Lord who prospers you. I am the Lord who takes you through the journey. So that confidence we need to have deeply rooted in our lives. So when we harp on it on a daily basis, as Paul says in Romans 12 verse 2, renewing our mind on a daily basis, that brings us closer to the state of peace on a daily basis. And we achieve that state of peace. And as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, whatever the state then we are under on this earth, will not impact us. So this is the ultimate state of being transcended uh, into that realm of peace by faith. So my brothers and sisters, a very short message. So hope you understood through the examples uh, what is this realm and how can we achieve it, how can we maintain it and uh, why it is important for us in both physical and spiritual sense in our lives. So until we meet again, uh, in a couple of days in our next uh, discussion of the journey. God bless you.